for most of what we're dealing with, that is not how we're going to see, certainly not how we're going to see healing and really not how we're going to see lasting change. Welcome to the Honestly Adoption Podcast, a show about adoption, foster care, advocacy, and becoming the best caregiver possible. Pull up a chair. We're glad you've joined us. Here are your hosts, Mike and Kristen Berry. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. We're so glad you have joined us. And we are, we've are we been doing this uh, podcast series for uh, several weeks now called Resources That Transform. It's been a lot of fun. Last week, we, were, we aired an episode that we recorded at the Replanted Conference. That was super fun. Um, because we were able to just interview people who were at the conference and, um, yeah, that was fun. People were, most people were like, yeah, I want to be on the podcast. And some people were like, absolutely not. I'm I know keep s- walking. <laughs> some people were just like, uh, they looked at me like one person actually looked at me like they were horrified that I they would were ask like, them. No, yeah, no, I don't want to be on the podcast, but no. other people were. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, it was great. That was a fun podcast yeah. to make. We missed Nicole because Nicole was legit out of the country. She was like trekking across Europe and they were having a great time. Um, but it was fun. And that brings us to this week's episode. We have our very dear friend, Jessica Sinarski, back on the epi- on the show again. She is from Brave Brains, bravebrains.com. She does this amazing, an amazing resource called Riley the Brave. And she's, she talked about a she lot has of a, other stuff. a ton of resources, so we're not going to be able to list them all. You just have to no. listen to the yeah. episode. Yes, you do. So, so that you know. That's true. So she's coming up on the episode here in just a, just a few minutes. Uh, I would less than that, a few, 30 seconds. Um, before we get to that, um, we want to tell you about uh, the show. If you're brand new to the show, welcome to you. Um, we're glad you're here. Um, this is an ever-growing audience. Uh, every month, uh, we just reach more people around the world, and it's so fun. But if you are brand new, uh, we invite you to jump over to honestlyadoption.com slash podcast, learn more about what we do, not just with the podcast, but with uh, the Honestly Adoption Company, our resources. Uh, you can even grab some free resources that we have. And we're just glad you guys are here. Uh, we have a lot of fun here. Um, and even with Jessica, um, you're going to hear in here in just a moment. Uh, we just had a good time. She's just an amazing therapist who has some incredible resources. And that's what we're all about. Resources that transform. And so, yeah, I think that's all I need to say. Right? I think so. All right. Here we go. On with the episode. Hey, Jessica. Welcome to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. I should say, welcome back to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. Thanks for having me back on. I know we're on like three or four now. So it, you're yeah. just, you're like a recurring guest. <laughs> a recurring role in the, in the drama of honestly adoption. Right. Exactly. There you go. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, well, we love having, having you on the show and you're a valuable partner of ours um, with, with what you do. Um, through Riley the Brave, and we're actually going to dive into that as well as a bunch of other resources that you've created because we are uh, full steam ahead with our series right now called Resources That Transform. Um, so I, let's just jump right in. I, I would love, I know we off air, we kind of talked about like, let's just pick up where we left off. That's kind of always the conversation, right? So um, we have you on here because of the resources you've created. So uh Tell the audience. Let's let's talk about sure. that. Well, first of all, maybe if, if people are new to the well, show, let's right. tell let's have you tell who you are first, right? We're already <laughs> off the rails, people. I know. Uh, can <laughs> listeners tell that it's the evening? We both we all have kids in different rooms. We're exhausted. And yeah. Tired. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's gonna be right. one of those Everybody people strap in. Those, those gestures right. or the look that says, yes. do not interrupt. Give me 30 minutes. <laughs> Yes. Yes, indeed. Well, part of the reason that we talked about having you on this program in this series is that they're they're just still, even after years, are are a lack of resources or a lack of connection to good resources. I know that one of the big conversations that I have with friends um, or through Honestly Adoption. what resource should I take to this IEP meeting? What language should I use with my um, with my child's teacher? How should I talk to the pediatrician? What is it I'm asking for? And um, 
you know, and then even how do I talk to my child about this difficult thing that happened? So, you know, you, you really have touched on a lot of those things by creating some resources to answer those questions. Can you talk a little bit about um, who you are and then, you know, kind of talk with our listeners about that lack of resources and where you are finding ways to kind of meet those needs? Yeah. I, I found the same thing as a therapist in this space. I've, I've always worked in the world of adoption and foster care. And I would find that, you know, maybe me and the family that I was coming alongside were making some good progress. And then parents are feeling like they then have to go and teach everyone else in their sphere, what they're learning about trauma and the brain and healing and attachment and, um, and what's really going on with big behaviors and, and all of those pieces well, that's exhausting. You know, you've already just done the work for yourself. You're helping your kid through the work. And oh my gosh, now I have to explain it to the fourth grade teacher. I just got done explaining it to the third grade teacher. <laughs> like here we are again. Um, and so, so the shift that has taken place in my career is really uh, trying to meet the need of those resources that that I can't see every family in my office, but man, I hope that I can equip you in Indiana and you in the UK and you in um, Australia and, you know, you in New York City with things that you can take to your teacher with some professional development for, for educators, for mental health professionals. You know, I didn't learn what I needed to, to be helpful in this space in graduate school, let alone college and, you know, just our normal education. And so, um, so I'm excited to have this chance to kind of dive into where, what I've created so far and where things are going to, to really home in on, making things useful for you in the trenches, wherever you are. Yeah, I absolutely love that because as uh, just as you said, like having to explain this complex journey and this complex diagnosis to a coach or I mean, we I've been in that place <clears throat> where I've had to say, OK, um, here's what's really going on. And then they, then there's that glazed look, right. And then yeah. you feel exhausted. It's just kind of like a double-edged sword. Um, so I, 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 it, I find myself, um, as you said, as you're saying that thinking, oh my gosh, I had like a visceral reaction in me. Like I remember those days. In fact, yeah. we're still in those days. One of the areas that I really think, uh, has this has, this has happened is in, is with schools, right. Mm -hmm. With, teachers with educators uh, especially in the situation where you know you you have the 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 teacher that says well I don't I don't really see what you're I don't really understand what you're talking about or I really don't see that there's an issue and then the school year progresses and they start to see it's kind of like the it's it's the it's rising to the top like oh now I see what you're talking about um but now what do I do? Right. If right. that makes sense. So Absolutely. when it comes to resources, I think one of the, one of the places I'd love to start is talking about resources specifically for schools or for yeah. educators or even for parents. So what are some of those resources that you've created specifically uh, for schools and how can they help? How do they help us sure. as caregivers? How do they help teachers? It's a huge question, but I think yeah. that that's a big thing that parents are, are dealing with right now. Yeah, so let's jump into, uh, there are a couple of free resources that I created in part for teachers who, you know, maybe there's a kid in your class who was adopted or you're, you know, you're trying to get more trauma informed um, and, and put some of these things into place, as well as for parents who are like, okay, here's what's going on. My kid is a Riley the Brave. You know, he is the super great kid. She is the super great kid who has had some tough stuff in life. And, um, and so I created a tips for teachers that mm. sort of plays off of some of what's introduced in story form in Riley the Brave, but then, but it's a free download that really anyone can make sense of, um, even if you don't have, have the book, but, you know, check it out from the library, like request it somewhere, even if you don't put it in your classroom library, um, I've also had families that will gift a copy of the book with the 
tips for teachers as a like, hey, we're in this together, not a do this better, but a, yeah. a, a way of saying, hey, I'm I'm on this journey too. It's a lot. I know you're trying to teach, you know, English language arts and math and manage this other kid stuff that's going on. And this kid has ADHD and this is that thing. And I hope this can be a support. I hope this can provide mm-hmm. some some language and some tools because man, brains are complicated, behavior is complicated, <laughs> and you have 25 little people in your classroom to make sense of. So I, I'm just really hoping this can be a support for understanding my little guy. Yeah. Another place that um, that I'm hoping to support in the schools is school counselors. So school counselors have, I mean, at best 250 kids on their on their caseload, so to speak. Um, they're also often called on to support teachers who are struggling with certain students or with certain behaviors. And um, again, most of them didn't learn this stuff in graduate school, this stuff that, that we're all talking about in the honestly adoption world, trauma and the brain and attachment. And, um, and when you don't have when you don't have that information, it's easy to go into behavior management mode, which we know doesn't help our kids. And so I created a free school counselor guide that introduces counselors to some of the, some of the metaphors and, and language that I use a lot in my work that seems to really resonate with adults, but especially with kids where they can make Mm -hmm. sense of, oh, this is what's happening in my brain, or this is why it feels like that. And, um, and so that's all introduced in the, the school counselor guide that is again, a tool that anyone can access. So if you're working in a school setting, you know, have at it as well as if you're (laughs) so, so tired (laughs) and just trying to have something (laughs) to share, to say, you know, this is a little bit of what's happening in our lives. And um, it would be great if, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk more about it or here are some places to learn more. Um, it, yeah, I hope this can be a support because I know it's, yeah. I know you're dealing yeah. with a lot, right? We, we, every member of the team, all the safe big critters in our kids' lives have a lot going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so my hope is to, is to plug the holes a little bit of where, um, you know, where we're drowning and see if that can just bolster the whole ship and um, yeah. And help us find our way. (laughs) So as we're talking, I pulled up both of those resources. I just clicked on the link. And as I'm listening to you, I'm reading along with these two free resources that you created. Um, And I love the way that you talked about empathizing with the teacher. Um, We're not trying to pile more on our teacher's plate. And most of us who are listening in are are saying, yeah, I know. I know that things can be tough with my kid. It's tough with my kid at home too. Um, I can't imagine doing that during the day and having 25 kids in the classroom and managing um, the workload that you have. These free resources are awesome. Um, we are going to have those in the show notes too, um, but where can people find these? So that will actually lead us to <laughs> where 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 things are going and growing. Um, so currently, if you go to bravebrains.com, there's a resources page where you can find all kinds of things, including these two free resources. What the the growing edge that's happening right now is I am in the middle of a website build for jessicasonarski.com, which will have quick access to lots more resources to podcast episodes like this or blog posts or other freebies or other things you can download, including the, the school counselor guide will be in the quick downloads, like homepage, just grab it and go kind of thing. Um, and so, so that is coming for everyone, not just for schools. So currently you can find everything on bravebrains.com. Um, but there's more coming for parents, for mental health counselors, for, for everyone who's trying to wrap around kids with trauma and for the adults who are working on healing their own inner child, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you have a lot of insight, um, just, 
you know, in the resources you've already created. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing everything that you have in the future. Um, I love, you know, as I'm looking over this, I changing the conversation, um, you use an example of, you know, what's inside your backpack. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? And then I'd love to ask you as, as a parent, what can I do when I find resources like this? What is the strategy for getting those in the hands of, of other people who need them? So can you tell us a little bit more about how you've created these resources and what you hope to accomplish um, in those new different conversations? And then what should I do with that information as a parent? So one of the things that you said, you know, I know it's tough with my kids. Sometimes we have a tough time at home too. Um, It is so easy for that to turn into, you know, my kid's the bad kid, Um, both in parent shame, as well as in teacher survival mode. We know that that downstairs brain behavior, that survival brain behavior, um, the other human's natural response is to go into defense mode too. So, survival brain begets survival brain. Um, it's a brain thing. It's not because they're trying to be a jerk um, or because you're a failure as a parent or you're a bad teacher. And so, one of the things that I am really committed to is making sure that we are honoring the courage of survival. Um, recognizing the big behaviors that come with it, but really honoring that um, that there is, you know, I almost I almost lose the words. Like every every story, every family that I've gotten to be a little tiny bit of a part of, I just have tremendous love and respect and um, admiration in a way for what they are coming together to try to do. What, whether we're talking, you know, foster, adoptive, kinship birth family, you know, everyone's overcoming odds. So Mm -hmm. in the resources that I'm, that um, in the Riley the Brave book series and in the Your Magic Backpack book series and in the other things that go along with that, that I'll tell you about in a minute, it is always person-centered. It is, it is always um, with a tremendous respect for everybody involved. So as we think about, you know, what's inside your backpack, it's not that, um, well, I'll, I'll actually tell you a little story. So there's the first book in the series is called What's Inside Your Backpack. And I was reading it with a group of kids who were in residential treatment. Um, and so, you know, obviously there had been some big behaviors that had ended, ended in that situation. And we read through and it's the story of a little girl who, you know, just wants to have fun playing basketball with her friends, but she feels weighed down. And we see that she has had an unsafe parent. Um, And so that's one of the heavy books in her backpack, along with worry pops in there and shame can pop in there. And, you know, these other big feelings can pop in there. And she's able to unpack it a little bit with with safe people in her life, with her mom, with her her school counselor, with her teacher. Um, No magic fixes. So, you know, my books can be... They're, they're bright and engaging and, and something that kids tend to enjoy reading, um, but it doesn't tie up in a neat little bow because that's not how life works. We want to help kids feel and deal with the big stuff. And so, um, so I'm reading this book with this group of kids and, um, and one, of the, one of the boys, he was probably about 12, raised his hand and said, so you're saying that like even if a parent did something bad, it doesn't mean like, doesn't mean like my life has to be bad. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I said. I kept it together. I was super cool and chill. And they're like, yeah, that's really what I mean. Inside, I'm like weeping, like, yes, this is the thing. Yeah. So sometimes it's as simple as that. It's as simple as reading a story together and seeing, seeing what comes up. Um, sometimes it's, sharing it with, if, if you know your kiddo is hesitant to hear things from you, maybe you share it with their grandma that they have a close connection with, or their um, therapist, or their, their older sibling that they feel really connected to um, and say, hey, you know, I think Mike would get a lot out of this. Do you think, you know, would you be willing to, to give it a read and, and share it at some point? That has been super powerful. Um, And then with all of my books in particular, but really the conversations that we're 
that we're having the, the, um, you know, as you said, Kristen, changing the conversation that my hope is it's not a one and done. Well, that problem solved. I wish it could be that way, man, guys, I wish I could give you the magic. I like, totally ka-chow. agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what that's, that's overall, like we were at replanted conference a couple of weekends ago and it was like, you look at these at desperate faces and you're like, man, I wish I could just say, follow these four steps and boom, life is, is now a highway, but it's not, it's a back country uh, road with massive, massive, uh, pits and rocks and things, you know? So yeah, I'm with you on that. It is Holy and flat God. tires and, yeah. you know, missed oil changes and all of the, all of the things. Right. Yeah. So my hope is always to empower the conversation. And so one of the mm. things that I do in my books is try to have the adults in the stories um, acting or communicating in ways that I know are brain building and healing for our kids. So I don't put it in there and I, I don't think this is people's impression, but I'm really conscious of not doing it in a like adult language or in a, in a way that would bring heap more shame <laughs> onto adults who already feel overwhelmed, but really as a, as a, as a way to learn, like the the same thing I'm talking about with teachers and counselors, like parents, you know, we didn't learn this stuff. We didn't learn. Many of us never had these conversations in our homes, or if we did, it was with parents who were doing the best they knew how it's not a shame and blame thing on them either, but generations have changed and understanding of mental health has changed. And, um, and so I want to provide a really tangible, like, oh, hey, that's how I could talk about that, um, that can be sort of mimicked from what you what you read together, you know, at story time. Yeah, yeah. Man, I resonate with uh, the, I would call it the lack of preparation that parents had, especially parents entering into the foster care system. Yeah. We, in becoming foster parents again, just realized, I mean, we became foster parents for the first time nearly 20 years ago, like 18 years ago. Right. And back then we were not prepared at all. We, I mean, we, we knew everything. We knew all the laws of the state, right. Uh, we knew we had to have running water and, uh, you know, an AC that works, but nobody told us how trauma changes the brain, right. How it rewires and it causes a, a, a human being to see the world differently. Yeah. Fast forward to this year, we're back in training again and we were blown away at the lack that it's still the same, right? It's, it's, I know, right? I mean, I almost feel like it got worse. Oh, that's so disappointing. It really is. We we still had some good, we lucked out almost 20 years ago. We had two of the funniest, ladies teaching the class of a caseworker. And then I think she was a social worker and a foster mom. And so like mixed in with all of this were some really real and like funny, not funny stories that, but I mean, it was truthful. So you weren't walking out of the foster training class thinking my child will never, you know, jump out of a moving car. You were thinking, okay, that's legitimately something that might happen. I should be prepared for that. Um, and those two ladies really, without all of this information we have access today, um, they really kind of got to the heart of it. I I remember the story that, that the woman was telling about, um, her foster daughter jumping out of a moving car and she saw a, a corner store. It's a chain here in Indiana. And the foster mom pretty quickly put all the pieces together that's where they always got their groceries. There wasn't anything Mm. near, they were living in a food desert. So that means you get your food from the corner store. Um, And so the foster mom was starting to put the, instead of being mad, I mean, no, it's not safe to jump out of the moving car, but also, Hey, Hey, next time let's not jump out of the moving car. That really scared me. That could have been dangerous. Do you want to get some things from here? Would it make you feel comfortable if we buy, you know, some snacks and, um, and they, j- they did a really good job of that. 20 years later, um, I definitely felt like our training was lacking. Um, it regressed. I, it I did. mean, deeply, deeply, yeah. deeply lacking. Yeah. And so, um, 
you know, boy, I want to highlight um, one of the things that you said here before we move on to just kind of how to share this with our, our greater tribe, uh, or maybe two things, really. Um, you, you use the phrase, and you use this a lot, that the, and I, maybe I butchered your phrase, honoring the bravery of survival. Yeah. Um, I, that shifts the way that I see something like jumping out of a moving car to get to the corner store. You know, when you tell the story at first, it sounds like, wow, what a terrible kid who jumps out of a moving car like that. That literally makes no sense. Honoring the bravery of survival all of a sudden shifts that perspective. Wow. That little girl went through a lot. And when she saw something that felt like home, she was doing everything to get back to what she thought was safe. That just, that gets my heart in a totally different way. So I, I love that you always use that type of language. Um, when talking about um, these really hard things that our kids have experienced. Um, I love that you talked about how um, in your, uh, in the free resource, the guide for uh, school counselors, you talk about using some of this understanding when you're talking to the frustrated teacher who just came in. Um, And we certainly know that as we're answering phone calls, you know, still we get the calls from the school. You'll never believe what your kid did. And and you have to have some (laughs) grace for that. You know, my my kid is trying to survive. Now the teacher's trying to survive and we're all living in. And now I'm trying to survive. (laughs) So we're all kind of living in that space. So I I really, um, I I just... I want to highlight that because I think that that is such an important shift and and has been for me ever since I first heard you say that phrase, I thought, man, I'm not trying to undo the survival behavior. I can honor it and move toward something else, hopefully move towards some healing. I think so. Something I come back to fairly frequently is superheroes are born from adversity. You know, our kids have superpowers. Our kids have have some um, grit and, and um, like ways to get through stuff that, that many of us will never fully appreciate. Um, And some of you listening might have some of that, you know, we all have some of those like trauma survival things that, that maybe have, have uh, carried over from our upbringings. And I think if we can, if we can be on the same team with sort of channeling that or, you know, just like that example that you gave of the foster mom, that as opposed to, as opposed to consequencing the behavior, you can't jump out of a moving vehicle for every five days you go without jumping out of a moving vehicle, you will get three stickers. And if you get six stickers, then you get, you know, like that is not, that is not, God bless it. Like there are times that, that there, there are times that we need behavior modification. Maybe I'm less and less convinced, but anyway, um, for most of what we're dealing with, that is not how we're going to see, certainly not how we're going to see healing and really not how we're going to see lasting change. And so if we can come at it from a, of course you wanted to do that, that makes so much sense. Or when we don't get it, like, you know, your kid decked somebody at school and you're like, ah, (laughs) help me understand Help me, you know, let's be curious together. Um, one of the, one of the Riley books is specifically around trying to dig into some of these kinds of things, like using playfulness and acceptance and curiosity and empathy. When our kids' behaviors are big, it's in the, Mm -hmm. the stories in the context of a grumpy morning, but those skills translate, those Mm -hmm. skills are, you know, Oh man, what, I wonder what happened. Like you're an awesome dude. And um, and you just punch somebody at school. Like what Help me, like, help me understand here. I'm on your team, yeah. right? It's not me yeah. against you. I'm not, I don't have to, I don't have to come from my fear brain of like, well, I should say I don't have to, but I can actively <laughs> work with support to come out of my parent fear brain of he's going to get kicked out of school. Oh my gosh, here we go again. The right. teacher's going to think I'm a terrible parent you know, I can't take off school. I mean, I can't take off work again. Like all of those things are happening and you're trying to help this kid find Mm -hmm. a new way to interact with the world. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. So I love your books and we've read them with our kids and our kids are a little bit older. They're not young elementary. And so I was like, Hey, come check this out. You know, what do you, what do you think about this? You want to read it with me? I'm going to 
interviewed this author here. My kids loved them. So, um, and that's coming from that older, yeah. there's something in there. We all need to know how our brains work and how yeah. our bodies respond to things. Um, but I'm specifically asking as I'm processing through what you're saying, I'm talking about middle schoolers. I'm talking about yeah. high schoolers. Yeah. I'm talking about, you know, maybe my young adult children. Yeah. How does this kind of curiosity play out in, in this kind of real world? I love this question and this like scenario, because I think, I think fleshing it out is, is super helpful. So I think a lot in terms of both and that we hold tremendous complexity in parenting in general, but, but a thousand fold in the world of foster care and adoption. Um, so if you're thinking about the, the kid who punched somebody at school, I think, so our, sometimes we're told or our brains go to like, what's the consequence? You know, there has to be a consequence. Um, if we think of, of consequences as a way to help the behavior not happen in the future, then I go back to sort of drawing on Dr. Ross Green's work of what is the lagging skill or unmet need. Um, and so is there, so, so when we're dealing with punching a kid, I guess even before I get to that point, though, I think about nervous system regulation. Punching someone is a downstairs brain behavior 99.9% of the time. I can't think of a time that your prefrontal lobe is in charge accurately, you know, effectively, and you're punching someone. Right. Um, so, so that downstairs brain kicked in. In the Riley series, I talk about those downstairs brain moments as, you know, having a tiger moment or having a turtle moment or having a squirrel moment, right? When we're, when we're that kid that jumped out of the moving vehicle is sort of having a squirrel and tiger moment all at the same time. Like I need to get there. I need the, I need the things I need to feel safe. I need to survive. And I'm going to activate to do that. I'm going to leap out of this moving vehicle. The kid that's punching that punched somebody at school. Um, that's a nervous system that that got activated. That is a brain and body that was amped and um, sensing threat somewhere. Not saying there was actual threat, but they that something got interpreted as danger. Um, whether it's somebody made a joke about moms or somebody did, um, you know, whatever the thing is, we can hold that that nervous system was in overload and activated and that punching is not acceptable. If we jump straight to, you cannot hit kids, this is not acceptable behavior. Is that reducing the activation of the nervous system? Is that, is that cooling things off? Or is that sending that kid further into their defense brain? Mm. So step one is, is that like, Ooh, that, that got really big. You know, I wonder what was going on. Hey, let's go for a walk. Let's shoot some hoops. Let's, you're not rewarding the kid by being active together. You're, di you're helping discharge that energy. If mm -hmm. one of the worst things we can do when there's some big physical altercation is sit the kid down and demand eye contact. Mm -hmm. That is threat galore. You know, think about it for yourself. If you're in trouble with your boss or you know, your spouse is, is upset with you or whatever, like, and, and they say, they sit you down to talk to you. What does your brain and body do? Danger, danger, danger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Flee, flee, right. flee. Yeah. Lie, Run. get out of it, get out yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, and so that's true with our kids. That doesn't mean permissive parenting. That means we right. start there. We start mm -hmm. with co-regulating. We start with helping them discharge that energy and then we can be curious or as we're doing that, we can be curious together who walk me through your day. Like what was going on, man, you know, and you're shooting hoops and you're walking through the day and, oh, and this thing happened and, and you guys know your kids. And so you're going to hear mm -hmm. something or you're going to see something in their eyes or the way they, they stop or shut down or shift that you're like, it was that, it was that mm -hmm. thing. And it can be as simple as, you know, somebody got a new pair of shoes or this, you yeah. know, so-and-so's birthday is coming up or, um, you know, this teacher looked at me sternly in a way that used to mean I was going to get beat. Like it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it doesn't make rational sense. 
but trauma lives in the body and Mm -hmm. our brains flip on a dime, on a dime for survival. Not because we're bad kids, not because he's an aggressive kid. Right. Yeah. 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 Man, I totally agree with that. That's it. I love this because um, we were just teaching on uh, some of these very principles this past weekend at replanted conference. And um, one of the things that we talked about was, you know, um, you think about your child, your child's behavior. And when you see these big, these big feeling moments, um, you know, that there's a bigger story. And I can tell you in a really simple way, how, you know, that's true because all human emotions, all human behaviors have an origin, right? I'm, I don't feel content for no reason at all. There's a reason why I feel content. I don't feel angry because, oh, I just decided I'd be angry, right? There is an origin to that. And I think what you're saying is, is hugely valuable for caregivers here, especially because, um, you know, especially when, when we respond, if we don't focus on helping the child re-regulate first, as I like to say it, it's like, we're trying to extinguish a campfire with a can of gasoline, right? It doesn't matter how much. I love that. that. It doesn't matter how much we pour on that. It just burns brighter. So even if we're saying like, you know, what's, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Well, first of all, the child may not know what's wrong with them. A yeah. and then B that, that tone, that approach yeah. just escalates the behavior. So yeah. I, I totally agree with you on that. I love, I love how, how you laid that out for caregivers. And, and even just what you said, like, if you know, as a parent that you're flipping into that, what, you know, what were you thinking? Like, how could you do that? Kind of, if that's where your brain and body are going, cool out for a second, don't Mm -hmm. address it right away. Right. Like take a walk away for a minute. Yeah. Walk away for a minute. I had to do it last night with one of my boys that, (laughs) that I, you know, I, I yelled, I am not a yeller, but I was at that thing and, and it didn't help anything. And I needed to cool out. I was seeing red, you know, I was just, it was all the fear brain stuff of like, he's never going to figure out how to do this. I'm failing as a parent. Clearly, like that's yeah. what it means when somebody doesn't brush their teeth is that you're failing as a parent. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> right, obviously. A plus yeah. B people. Come on. Right. That's so, what the dentist says. <laughs> yeah. so I really had to, I had to cool out for a minute before I could go yeah. in for the repair. Um, because I had actually yelled at him and needed to say, yeah. I'm sorry. I yelled like, I'm sorry. I had a tiger yeah. moment at you. But if you hadn't been so, no, 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 I didn't say all of those pieces. Yeah. I just repaired. And guess what? We got to go to bed at peace, even though I feel yeah. my lid a little bit. Um, yeah. So I think we're trying to help our kids through that process of if we can figure out what it was that was kind of the trigger, then we have a fighting chance of um, working on that piece. You know, yeah. what can, yeah. how can the kid um, be what can they do in that class with a teacher who has the stern face that is triggering or how can they yeah. navigate the social situation with the kid? Like, is there some skill building that's needed? Is there, um, is there, is there an unmet need? You know, do we need yeah. to support in some other way? Yeah. And, you know, as for consequences, I think there can't, there are times that repair is needed you know, that we need to help our kids with that repair process. Mm -hmm. So what do they need to do for that kid that they punched? Even if that kid started stuff, what do they need to do when they took the money from the teacher's desk? Um, Mm -hmm. We'll give the money back. And then how can they help the teacher out in some way as a, as a sort of like making things better? Um, There are, there are ways to, to have some natural consequences and repair built into the arc of, you know, if you want to think of discipline, um, of what the follow-up is to an Mm -hmm. incident, how we parent after, after behavior, but hopefully most of our parenting is coming pre-behavior. That's why, you know, Riley, the brave sensational senses and getting the sensory system, you know, involved, like really thinking from a sensory perspective and, you know, all of the work, all of the work that you guys who are listening are doing to yeah. learn this stuff and be proactive in your parenting, man, it matters. There are days yeah. it's going to feel like, like, why do I even try? I, mm-hmm. I hear you, right? I live and breathe this stuff all day long and we're still like, it's hard. This parenting yeah. stuff is hard. 
And so that's where I I really hope to um, hope to support. So one of the buckets of support that's coming in on jessicasanarski.com is about big feelings and big behaviors, because Mm -hmm. we know this is just such a, um, such a tough topic that we have to keep coming back to. Totally. You know, you said uh, uh, something that I think is key for caregivers to hear you uh, and it's, it's from your own personal parenting vault. Um, You said after the, after this blow up happened, you worked to repair. And I think that's important for caregivers to understand Um, when you fail, when we fail, not if, but when, um, repair is number one, still possible. And number two, it's necessary, right? Because two things happen. Number one, you end at peace. Like you can, you can, the, the plane can land at peace, but then second of all, you're also teaching your children how to repair, um, things that are broken. If, if, if they do something that, you know, severs a relationship or damages a relationship, work to repair that. That is the story of life right there. It's not just about, mm-hmm. it's, it's never about getting it all right. Cause we're never going to get it all right. But when you blow it caregivers, yeah. the next step then is work to repair it. That's the story of our lives, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, that yeah. I'm, we, for us, I'm pointing at me personally, like Mike and Kristen, right. We are in these trenches too. And um, yeah. Repair, repair, repair. I yeah. love that. I love that piece. And something that's kind of cool about yeah. that process, the rupture and repair, is that that's actually part of, of brain development. That's yep. part of how we form attachments. We don't get it right all the time. We we are constantly falling out of attunement with our loved ones, with our with our yeah. partner, with our friends, with our um, with our kids. Certainly, we cannot be locked in. 100% of the time to every every single need and and mood and whatever of each child and it's actually that's not the goal it's detrimental if if you don't have experience with that with that rupture and repair um, there's a fascinating podcast with Ed Tronic who did the still face experience experiment um, about that process but um yeah, we it is it is essential and it's part of every human relationship. And if you didn't experience that constructively with your parents or in your significant relationships, if things got swept under the rug, if it was yelling and then nothing, if it was the cold shoulder, if it, you know, whatever your experience was, this might feel really awkward. This might right. feel um, it might feel like you're giving up power. It might mm-hmm. feel embarrassing. Um, it might feel really vulnerable, right? Yeah. It might feel unfair. I, it didn't feel fair yeah. to me to have to apologize when he had been rude to me earlier. Right? Like, but I'm talking about an eight-year-old, and you know, yeah. I'm the. I need to put my big girl pants on and and be the adult and right, make it right, better. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's man. You're you're preaching to the choir with that one for sure. So. Man, I tell you what, this has been so fun, and um, it it looks like we're gonna have to eventually get get another webinar on the books because we got to keep talking about this stuff, right? Yeah. A podcast episode, yeah, does not do the trick. So um, uh, this, you know, we're gonna, as Kristen said a moment ago, we're gonna um, make sure we link all of this into the notes. You gave us a whole rundown of the, these fabulous resources. So if you're listening and you've been feverishly writing. You just wasted a lot of time writing it down because it's all it's all digital. It's all right there on the site. You can go but right there. You didn't there to, waste to time our, writing it down. Thank you, Kristen. That's the way not, some of us learn. It, thank you. I'm not saying that you wasted time <laughs> writing what Jessica said. Yeah, I'm saying that. I it's was feverishly all, writing, it's so all I'm, I'm taking on it personally now. <laughs> now I feel bad. Rupture and repair. I, Rupture and repair. Yeah. We're seeing right. it That's in vivo. Re- <laughs> Yeah, let's repair this. Let's repair this. If you wrote it down, A plus to you. Yes. You can also go over to and, the site. And, 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 and we repair it just like that. Yeah. We learned a lot yeah. from you tonight, Jessica. Thank you. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. I do also want to yeah. tell you, I know um, there are some maybe counselors or mental health professionals mm-hmm. or others who work in this space. The next, if you really want to dive deeper into what um, sort of lightening the load of all of these big behaviors and the neurobiology of attachment-focused therapy, the CEU series 
moving beyond trauma informed will open soon. So you'll want to get on the wait list at bravebrains.com. And I'll make sure that Mike and Kristen have the exact link to go to that will give you all the info about that course. Right on. Absolutely. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, Jessica, I hope your kids brush their teeth. <laughs> hope everything goes well for you. Thank you for giving us your time tonight. You're wonderful. It is my pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Honestly Adoption Podcast, a resource courtesy of the Honestly Adoption Company. To learn more about us, visit www.honestlyadoption.com.